I usually start off talking about a formula. This is the 101 of lubricants. All lubricants made to the same basic formula. In this case, our motor oil. Motor oil is made up of base oil plus additives. Base oil plus additives. And base oil is the wet and slippery stuff. It is just an oily oil. Different viscosities, and uh, we could spend another class learning how to do all that stuff, but that's that's the basics of it. The base oil can either be a mineral oil, right? The stuff out of the ground, gone through the refinery. Could be a synthetic oil, a man-made kind of thing with some superior characteristics. Or it could be a blend. And you actually are seeing quite a trend towards synthetic blends and full synthetics because it's very difficult to meet the demanding requirements of newer oils with just a straight mineral oil. Very, very difficult. Viscosity is resistance to flow. This is resistance to flow idea is pretty intuitive to most of us, right? You take, pour some water out, you pour some honey out, you get an idea, one is a higher viscosity, one is a lower viscosity. We all have that, uh, have that idea. And it's important to note that viscosity varies with temperature. Now, how much at temperature, how much it varies with temperature is, an, is another question. You know, the stuff does thin when heated, and everybody who's ever warmed up maple syrup can see that happen. Um, it happens with syrup, I mean, it happens with motor oil. It actually happens with water. You, you need to be very, you have the right equipment to measure it very carefully, but as you heat water up, it also thins. All right, well, let's leave water and go back to our motor oil. And here's an animation example of how it goes through there. And see, we've got a stopwatch as part of this process. So. Let me go ahead and run this for you. All right, this J-tube gets filled up with oil and we let it run and we start the stopwatch now and we stop it at point B. So we've timed how long it's taken this oil to flow through this known segment. We take that oil and we go, at, or excuse me, we take that timing, that number of seconds, and we take a certain calibration code from the J-tube and we plug it into another formula and we end up with a number that is the viscosity. And the typical unit of viscosity measurement, and there are a whole bunch of scales, but most of them are pegged back to this unit called the centistoke. Uh, for your useful information, because we're all familiar with uh, certainly most of the common grades in use, is what, what the upcoming trends are. And there has been a trend both in heavy duty engine oils as well as passenger cars on lighter viscosities. The reason? and it should be pretty straightforward. Which is it easier to swim through? A, a swimming pool of honey or a swimming pool of water, right? It's easier to swim through the thinner stuff. You gotta do a lot more work to get through the thicker stuff. Which one is gonna give you better economy in an engine? The engine that's fighting thick stuff or doesn't have to fight the thin stuff? And that's exactly how it works. The thinner oils give better fuel economy, assuming you've designed your engine well enough to tolerate thin oils and you're not sacrificing anywhere. Uh, what is remarkable is that is the case. The uh, engine designers and builders are doing some remarkable things with some very, very thin oils. And that leads us to the current trend, the newer viscosity grades. Of course, driven by fuel economy and emissions, we're talking about 0 W16. 0W16 is actually in the U.S. market right now. Coming along, 0W12 and 0W8. These, I believe, are in Japan currently. Uh, Honda developing with these. 0W8 is remarkably thin stuff. Uh, it is just marginally thicker than uh, diesel fuel number four. Here's some history timeline on engine oil quality as based on these service classifications. Okay. We're currently at, or have been up until May 1, we're at API service level SN plus. The new one is API service level SP. Okay. If you count your way backwards, these are all done alphabetically so that what the oil for old, old engines way back in the day was just a straight mineral oil, no additives. That's API SA. 
You put in just a touch of maybe some antioxidation additives, you're at probably at API SB. And over time, uh, these, these, all of these things have progressed. Engine oils have gotten better through SC and SD and SE and SF, all the way up to now where we're at SP. And you can see that, of course, along the timelines designated where the, uh, where the years are. And you can also see that it was about 1992 when the ILSAC got involved. All right, I'll talk about that in the history slide here next. And the ILSAC came in and started joining in. They started with their specification GF1, and that's been growing to GF2, GF3, and on to now GF6. Really wrapped around one big concept, if you had to kind of summarize it. And it's this idea of power density, okay? Think of density. Think of power. I mean, when you think of something that's really powerful, yet really dense, what do you think of? Okay, maybe that's what you're thinking of. That's really not what I had in mind. Now, what I had in mind is something more like this. Power density, in terms of engines, is getting more out of less. That's it really in a nutshell. And this particular graphic is pretty clear on that. Take a look at this. We've got a 1991 SUV and a 2014 SUV. Okay? The 1991 SUV has a V6 in it, six-cylinder engine. Okay? The 2014 one has a four-cylinder engine. And yet that four-cylinder engine cranks out almost 100 more horsepower. That's a 65% improvement in horsepower from a smaller engine. All right? That's getting more from less. I mean, take a look at the, f the combined fuel economy on these things, too. On the, the, uh, the 1991 vehicle, it was giving you 16 miles per gallon combined. And now you're at 23 on the combined for the 2014 vehicle. That's a 43% that's a improvement in economy. That's a, that's a pretty remarkable improvement with what these engine, engine makers are doing. Newer technology is gasoline direct injection. Okay, the gasoline, your fuel, is directed into the combustion chamber and not into the incoming air. And I'll, I'll graphically show you this here in a second. But this idea of direct injection is not in itself new. This is how diesel engines work. Okay? Diesel engines have always had direct injection of diesel fuel into the combustion chamber. Here's a, an animated picture of what this direct injection looks like. So you have this graphic here. We're looking inside of a cylinder, right? You've got the, the uh, intake manifold coming in there and the injector is shown here just below it and that spark plug in the middle. This will take you through all four of the four stroke cycles. So let's start that up. Okay, so it's going through there. They see what's coming in on the intake is just air and the injector there blows it in, spark plug lights it off and you get your, your power stroke. So we're injecting immediately into the cylinder, not into the um, uh, not, not ahead of the intake valve. So, we're putting this presentation together and I go to Andre and I say, Andre, we got to have a spider chart. As you can tell, Andre's a marketing guy, not an engineer. So, I will spare you the spider chart. You don't have to see one. But, we will go over each of these features of GF6. Okay, the important features here. All right, so the first, as I've been probably beating into you by now, is to prevent low speed pre-ignition, prevent LSPI. Okay, LSPI bad. Does engine damage, that's first and foremost. It's also very noisy, okay, creates uh, engine noises, and it results in poor performance, like poor acceleration and stumble, that sort of thing. So, we're gonna take a look at some normal combustion and then some abnormal combustion. Okay, remember it's a, it's a, you're looking down onto the cylinder, spark plug is going to be in the middle, and this flame front is gonna propagate from there. So let's take a look first here at normal combustion. 
Okay, it's going to point out in the middle. That's where the spark plug is at. And the flame is going to initiate from there. And give us a nice pressure wave that goes evenly across the piston, drives the piston down, moves the crankshaft, everything works great, right? This is how it was designed. Nice, smooth, even combustion, goes all the way down. Now when you have LSPI, you end up with ignition that's not in the middle, but maybe starting towards the edge, like that. See that, how it started toward the edge and moved its way across? All right, this is not what the engine was designed for. This is causing the piston to move in ways to the side it wasn't designed for. This is causing an uneven load, or not, or not exactly designed even load, on the connecting rod and the crankshaft. Okay? Lots of bad things going on with abnormal combustions. It also can cause a hot spot at the place this is happening and weaken the metal or weld through the metal there. Okay? So you can end up with some pretty serious damage from low speed pre-ignition. Take a look at these pictures. These are a couple of uh, pistons that were pretty beat up from that. Here's our surprise. You don't get just one today, you get two GF6s. Yes, folks, there's a GF6A and a GF6B. All right, so let's clear that up because that could probably confuse some people as well. GF6A refers to the usual viscosity grades, the ones we're used to, the 0W20, 5W20, 5W30, all right? And those are all still designated when you go to have a container, a, a quart or a gallon or something like that. The label icon is this API donut with the regular uh, viscosity grade designation in the middle, okay? GF6B is the new guy on the block, okay? GF6B is to represent the new lower viscosity grades. In this case, the official one in here in the system as part of GF6, GF6B, is 0W16, okay? I'm, this is the same category, though, that in the future I would not be at all surprised to see 0W12 and the 0W8. And they did grant this a different label icon, obviously wanting people to, or wanting to avoid people confusing it with the normal viscosity stuff. So hopefully, you don't go into the store, grab a bottle off a shelf, without noticing that, hey, it's got a shield on it and not a donut. And notice how that the 0W16 is even more prominently displayed on there, that hopefully that'll grab people's attention that this is a different viscosity grade than what they're used to getting.